We are on page 102, uh, the Maimon Malchavaka, where right now the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, explained to us the importance of Kabbalah soil as the foundation to make the understanding of Hashem in what we call an Achtus Hashem, finding Hashem's unity in everything and everywhere, requires that it be based on Kabbalah soil, not just on logic. And now he brings proof from the Rambam. It's the first line, the top line, the last two words. The Rambam, the Rambam says, Bitchilosoi, quote, Yesoid HaYesoidis, the foundation of all foundations, V'amud HaChokmes, and the pillar of all wisdoms. Later, it is to know, Sh'yesh Shom Motsuidishin, that there is a first cause, a first existence. Vahu, and this first existence, Mansi Kol Hanim Tsoyim, makes possible all future and other existences. The Chol Hanim Tsoyim, and all other, and all existences, may show Mayim Vahoritz, of heaven and earth, means everything, Umasha Benayim, and anything and everything between heaven and earth, lo'inimtzu, do not become existent and possible, ela ma'amitis himotzai, only because of the true existence, the true HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's a quote, as you see the quotes from the Ramba. Now says the previous Rebbe, Harei, o'imer kan gimel in yonim yisoidim. The Rebbe says that the Rambam says here three fundamental points. Let's see what they are. Hayesoid Allah, the first important point. Shahu Yis Borich Motsidishin. That Hashem is the first existence. Motsidishin. Two, the Yesoid Abeis. Shahu Yis Borich Mansikol Nimtza. This first existence makes possible all existence. That's the point number two. And finally, point three. That the manner, the method of which Hashem makes possible all existence, it's through what we call true existence. True existence is the method used to make existence. And although these are foundations, Kloima in Yonim Atzmiim, they are essential qualities of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The Binyonim Atzmiim had a loyipul boy in Yenachkir of Adrisha. When it comes to inherent essential qualities, the the whole realm of Hakir of searching and Drisha and expounding is not relevant. That's relevant where you, when you talk about, uh, uh, when you talk about a discussion, I'm sorry, when you talk about a definition, a manifestation, but in XM, this is what it is. It is what it is. There's nothing to talk about. It is what it is. The Dover Shikari Mechudish Kmerseichel, something that we call cre- a creation, new intellect, Seichel. Over there, Moshe, the concept of Hakira and Drisha, um, searching, re- inquiring, and expounding, Yipobe means falls upon it. It's, it's applicable. Let me explain. Yonison, when you have a, a Chidush, when you have something new that didn't exist before and now comes into existence, you have a, the right to ask where did it come from, why did it come from, what's going on, because it lent itself to that world. It's comprised of that world. But when you talk about foundations, in other words, how the building is standing and why the building is standing and where will the building go and all that is once you have an erect building. But the foundation in the ground, it's a foundation. It, 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 it is, it is. There's nothing there to ask about. So the Rebbe's, the previous Rebbe's rhetorical question on his own words is, what, what um, actually the Rambam's words, what, what does it mean to, to uh, on one hand the Rambam calls them Yesoid HaYesoides, foundation of all foundations, the fundamental ideas, the three points, 
And at the very same time, we're examining them. There's no, seemingly, there's no room for examination. They are what they are. So he now responds, Avil. The word Avil now is the retort to his rhetorical question. Avil, however, the Indian you say this me. I'm sorry, I take that back. Avil still part of the rhetorical point. Avil be in Yisaidi, but regarding a fundamental point. Shahu atzmi, which it, it is the essential issue, and a shayachach kirevadrisha. The whole idea of searching, inquiring, and expounding is not applicable. Ain't a shayach means not applicable. So al and here comes the answer, the retort. Al zehu aimer. That's why the Rambam adds the words v'amuda chachmas. Moshe, look back at those four words which everyone cites throughout history. Now, the Rambam wasn't, it wasn't just into poetry, writing, you know, poetic language. The pillar of all pillars. I'm, so, I'm sorry, the foundation of all foundations. And the pillar of wisdom. I mean, come on. You know, now of course we know that the son, the son of the Rambam says that those four words are an acronym of Yud K Vav K. Are you familiar with that? Right? Yisoid is Yud, Ha Yisoid is He, Vi Amud is a Vav, Vav, Ha Chochmas is He. Yud K Vav K, the name of Hashem is spelled out. So Avram ben Harambam, the son, says, my father alluded to the Yud K Vav K in those four words, and then the Mukubolim argue from this, we see that the Rambam was a Kabbalist. But of course the 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 um, many others disagree, and they say that's nonsense. You know that doesn't prove that he was a capitalist. Okay, so those that don't, because there's a big argument whether the Rambam was a rationalist or a or a rationalist plus a capitalist. It's a very big discussion, and it's basically the disagreement between the Yekke, Washington Heights Yekke Jews and 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 many others. The Yekas believe the Rambam had nothing to do with Kabbalah. It's all nonsense. In fact, they deny the, they deny that the Zohar that the Zohar is from the Rabshim, and I don't want to go into it. But it's a whole. This is a whole discussion in Jewish literature, not in Talmudic literature, but in you know in the more modern writings of Hakira. You can find it all over the web, you know. But Hasidus and Hasidim, and even even the Gra. I believe, accepted that the Rambam, I, I, I'm not sure if the Gro did, I think he did, but for sure the Baal Shem Tov and the this accepts that the Rambam was a, uh, was, was a Mekubal. And they bring this as proof. But what we're getting, that, okay, so I just told you that as an aside, but what we're getting at over here is, the Rebbe's point is, why does the Rambam add the word Amud HaChochmas? Let's see what he says. The Yisaida, Yisaida is what the Rambam means by the foundation of the foundation of the foundation of the essence of God. This very essence, Amud HaChochmas, becomes the pillar for wisdom because Hashem and His Chochmas are one. So now, now when the Rambam says that Al Rebbe quotes in chapter 4 in Tanya, right in chapter 2 and chapter 4, who are you, Dev? Who are you, Dev? Right? He's all one. So the, so the, the Rebbe is saying, that's what the Rambam means when he's, by adding the words, Amud HaChochmas. This essence of Yesoida, Yesoida is, this is one with Chochmah. Which is a Chiddush, it's a novelty, because Chochmah is Seichel. And Seichel is what? A Mechudish, a novelty, a creation. And if it's a creation, it lends itself to questions and answers, dialogue, three shiva hakira. So the Rambam says, but by Hashem it's not that way. That's by man. But by Hashem, who the chokhmah seyechot? He and his knowledge are all one. So just like he is beyond hakiro drisha, his chokhmah is beyond hakiro drisha. Yonason, did you ever hear a shir on that in Maristan from Rabbi Lipsker or someone else? I heard it, yeah, I, I remember hearing it maybe from Rabbi Vichnin. Rabbi Vichnin, Rabbi Vichnin. Yeah, because this is, this is a common discussion in, when you learn see this in yeshiva. Let's go on. So he says, The fact that Hashem, 
creates. Look at it. Looks. Look at the word Moshe. He doesn't use the word Ubriya. It says Vaatzilus in Yenachachma. You know why? Because when you talk about Bina and beyond, usually you use the word uh, Bria. When you talk about when you talk about Chochma, which is the the first, it's it's yet it, in comparison to Bina to understanding that and an, an analysis. The 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 point in the Kuda is this, I don't understand it. It's just an idea. Well, what am I going to do with it? So it lends itself to the word Atzilut. Atzilut means creation, but not creation as it's creation in Bria. It's the creation as it's in the Godhead called Atzilus. So Atzilus, in Hashem forming Chochma in himself. That gives room and possibility for for mankind, for creation, for cre- creatures to understand God. And this is a Gvaldik and the Kudu. Listen to this. Yes, Hashem and His wisdom are one. But the fact that there is Chochma in the Godhead gives the ability for one to expound God, to understand God. Yes, Moshe. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty radical. <laughs> Why is that ra- Why? I mean, the concept of a person, a, a human creation, being able to understand the Kodesh Baruch Hu, I, on, the, on the face of it, it sounds very radical. Okay, and it's Semach Tzedek, in Derech Mitzvah seems to agree with you, but he says, when you learn Panimi Yisat you're having a conversation with God. And that's the whole idea. The Tzemach Tzedek said that? Yeah. I'm, paraf- I'm paraphrasing what he said. Uh, uh, but okay. but the, 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 it, in other words, obviously he was like also bothered by the, the, what you're saying. It's radical, but that's what he's saying. That that's, that's another... Um, benefit of learning chesidus is because you are in the in the ballpark in the domain of conversation with Hashem. That's what chesidus is, <laughs> atzilus bria Svidus, and all that, right? And, yeah. and 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 now you can understand why the Misnagdim had a problem with it, you know, way back in the time of the the Goyen and and the Baal Shem Tev, because, like you said, it's very radical. But came along the holy Baal Shem Tov and said no, and the Al Rebbe took it a step further and developed it in Chabad in understanding, and said no. There's a kosher way of having a concert, but it, 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 it absolutely is radical. No, if anyone tells you it's not radical, they don't understand what's going on. It's radical, and that's why it caused an uprising. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you test Kislev substantiated from on high. That this radical approach is a godly approach and not a foreign approach. And the Rebbe said, 200 years later, all the tightness and, and, and concerns of the, of, the, of the Misnagdim, you know, that this is a radical heresy, we see is unfounded. Because, by and large, Chassidim remained faithful to, to Torah mitzvahs. So, it's not heresy, it's different than what you're used to, granted, but it has its sources in Taita, and the world needed it both because there was a melancholy and depression in the Jewish community at the time, and because it's a, a, neat, a spark of Mashiach's time. And as we get closer, we need to taste the food of Erev Shabbos, of Shabbos, on Erev Shabbos. So we're tasting the food of Mashiach vis a vis the teaching of Pnimi Zatayra, Kabbalah, and Hasidus. And in this case, Hasidus. But, but did they have reason for concern? Absolutely. And that's mounted on top of the, I was discussing it with my friend in Australia on WhatsApp this morning, with the, 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 the behavior of the Karliner, Hasidim, who started before the Alter Rebbe. He was during the time, you know, he was older. And some of his Hasidim, Wanted showed want showed disrespect for Talbid Chachamim, so they 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 made themselves very silly, 
you know, like going into a, 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 fru- a food store and, and saying they want to buy nails to, bo- to, to knock into a board. They, they humiliated themselves. And part of that humiliation was to humiliate Talmud HaChachamim. Because they wanted to show that not, the essence is not wisdom, chachma. The essence is practice, heart, emunah. And they did these things, and they were called, it was in the year 1770, in Hebrew, 1770 is Tov Kuf Lamed. And if you reverse the three letters, Tov Kuf Lamed, you get Tok. So the, the saying at the time was, Chsidei Tok is Nish, Chsidei Tok is Nish Kain Tok. The Chasidim of 1770 is not appreciative. That's not the way. So the, the Magid and, and the Altareb and others were very upset with this behavior. And this is a whole, I've written about it too in one of my books because it's important to understand the history of what bothered the Misnagdim about Chassidim. So this was a practical issue that really bothered them. But we're talking today about the philosophical issue. Yes, Moshe? Now, just out of curiosity, which one of your books, interested in what you just had? Oh, you know, I'll, 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 have, I'll have to do a search. Um, okay, it's okay. I'm just curious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have to do a search, you know. I, I, I write so much. I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll do a search and I'll tell you, Billy Nether. But I, I clearly wrote about it because it's, it's a very important, uh, it might be in my first book, Gedoylim, Chabad and Gedoylim, or the volume two, which is coming out next year. I, I don't recall at this point. But this was, this was, this was a, this was a a major issue, or maybe it's in the book coming out now on Chabad and Stolen and Square, like told Jonathan about. It could be I wrote about it there. It could be. Um, okay. Because the stolen, you know, um, the Carliner, the stolen Carlene. So it could be that I wrote about it there in a footnote, you know. Um, but, and, and by the way, when you look at the interrogation papers of the Alter Rebbe, Hasidim are called Carliner, Carliner, Carliner. Which is very interesting. They're not called Chabad. The whole, I, the whole name Chabad didn't exist at the time, or at least if it if it existed, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal. What was really known was the Karlina. And why? Because of their wild behavior. This is Reb Aaron. The Reb the, this, Aaron. The, the, this is again. I'm not saying Reb Aaron sanctioned it, I, um, but but as a as a result of Reb Aaron's avoda, his Hasidim went on a rampage. Of being mavatled and misnagged them. You know, you know how it is. People get carried away. So the Rebbe, you know, the Rebbe can say one word and, and the Hasidim take it a, a mile. And, and it led to a, a mamish, it led to a lot of problems, big problems. Now, whether, whether this was the, 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 uh, the main reason for the Hisnagdas, for the opposition to Hasidim, or it was the philosophical issue that we discussed earlier, that needs to be. Discussed or looked at carefully, and maybe I'm sure they've written about it, but uh, you know, I can't give an opinion which one had more weight than the other, but both were issues. Uh, anyway, look, yeah, the rabbi, Belvin, you know, I know I got my wife knows some Carlina people, and, and they always have a problem with me being come back. Always, I mean, you know, what, what is it with these people? What is it with them? Well, you know, again, I don't know if they're, you know, if they're real Carliners and they want to keep to the, to 200 years before with Rabarin, they were all into midas, into emotionalism, you know, and, and Chabad is the total opposite. That, wait, that's one issue. The other issue is that Rab, the Alter Rebbe didn't allow Rab Shleimah Karliner to settle in uh, Beshenkovitz, which was under his territory, and he told them, uh, he, he told them, you could come here, but you can't teach your style of chesidus here. Really? And he never came. He, he well, he, I'm sorry, he didn't come. He didn't come there. But later he came. But he, they, they murdered him. So it's a very sad story. Oh my God! Wow! 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 wow. In 1892, I think he was murdered. Wow. Um, and um, but Al Tareba told him, you know, that I was charged to to take care of this region, and the shita here, I do not want to be just rely on your Rebbe. I want you to do your own work, and you know, which is the Chabad ethos. 
and uh, I, that it could be that some of them are still living with that um, anger, you know, that, that feeling. I don't think so. I don't think that's the reason. But if you want to know, I, I wrote about this. I mean, you know, way back, and Rab Usher, wait, there's number point. Rab Usher of Stolen, I think is the son or grandson of Rab Aaron of Karlin. He lived during the Alter Rebbe's times into, you know, the 1800s. He sided with Rab Avram Kaliskir, who opposed the Alter Rebbe in the late 1700s. So, I mean, there, you know, so Stalin way back was not a friend of Chabad's. But, but it, 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 then as the years went on, it all kind of ended, you know. So I can't tell you why they, you know, they... Um, Continued. Yeah, in, 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 in other words, the Stalin Hasidim or real Stalin Hasidim and no Stalin Hasidim in history... It's a different derech than Chabad. In a way, it's the opposite derech of Chabad. And they're very passionate. You know, so they're very passionate in their avoid of espitals, of emotionalism. So, you know, to them, they know that Chabad is just the opposite of that type. So it's, it, it's, it's a stira. Whereas Ger, for example, or, or you know, another chsidus, they, they weren't, the, the emotionalism, they're chagas, but they, it wasn't a cornerstone of their belief. In, in Karlin and Stalin, it's a cornerstone. Like I've told you, if you don't scream all your lungs out during David, you're not a real Stalin. And, 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 I, and I saw it by, I saw it by very, by top Stalin, even though they're Rebbe, the Rebbe doesn't do that, which I don't want to go into it, but it's a little... Uh, I asked about it, and then you know they throw back at me. Your rebbe doesn't didn't daven at length barichas like it says in the, in the Rashab. So you're pointing the finger at our rebbe, but the last stone, this stone, the rebbe today, he ain't screaming, and he ain't blowing his lungs out. <laughs> very, he seems very, very uh... right. But if you but 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 uh, uh, Moshe, if you see some real stone of see them who still from the past and. They're not like that. And even here in Borough Park, some of them who, they're not Israelis, they're Americans, and they grew up here in America in the 30s and 40s. They were davening with fire. I, mean, I would go in there just, just to get a, a high from it. It was, it was inspirational, just if, you know, you needed a charge. Okay, let, I want to finish the mime. Let's go back. It's a good, a good, a good fabrenge. Maybe one of the future fabrengas will talk more about it. Amen. So he says... So the Rebbe says, "V'asher al kain." Therefore, Efshel laid that gimel and yonim ayisaydi malolu. One can know these three foundational points: Shehu is baruch motzi rishi mamtzi kol tzayim. Number one, that God is the first existence. Number two, that this existence makes possible all other existence. V'oifin am tzayis am tzayim. Number three, the manner and method in which He makes these existences possible. Who miamitis him motzi? It is coming from the truth of existence. And the Rebbe says, not only is the Ramba mean to say that it's possible to know Hashem, as Moshe says, this radical idea, but, but the Rambam, the, Reb, the Rebbe is interpreting the Rambam. What the Rambam is really saying is that the mind, the brain capacity of man can actually grasp God. And the Rebbe says another point. What the Rambam means to say by saying this, Moshe, is you're obligated to do this. He isn't saying Amuda Chochmas, right? Those that it's the pillar of wisdom for you to play golf, and if you decide to think about God, go for it. No, you have an obligation as a yid to know Hashem, to explore Hashem. Eloizo is the idea of Rezehu Chayva. That it's a chayv, it's an obligation. So, Amr, the idea of Dovazer, mitzvah sasei. The Rambam in Halacha Yud. Look what he says there, Moshe. Knowing this, the idea of Dovazer, mitzvah sasei. It falls under the positive, a positive commandment. Vahainu. The Levad, so it's actually the idea of Dovazer, you say this is the Chayv, in addition to the fact that this idea is the foundation of all foundations, the pillar of all wisdom. He ne gufe etzim, he deal zo, he mitzvah say. Knowing the, the very fact that you know this information, that you 
understand Hashem, you, you work towards understanding Him, you're fulfilling a mitzvah sasei. So the Rebbe knows that this is really radical, like Moshe said. So that when you ever you see Vo'inyan, you know the Rebbe is on to explaining that something that I said was really far out and radical, I need to explain it. So the explanation is... Knowing Torah is a mitzvah. What is the amount of the mitzvah, Moshe, that you, your brain capacity and your mind, the Yodisin, have to understand and comprehend the halacha that you're learning? The mitzvah of knowing Torah is in addition to the mitzvah of learning Torah. It's two separate mitzvahs. Limud Hatayra and Yediyas Hatayra. The Shir Mitzvah Sehu Amira Seisi Shabbatayra. The Mitzvah is of, of the, the the Mitzvah of knowing Tayra involves saying the words of Tayra. Av Gam in Eini Yodeya Perushim, even if you don't know their explanation. The Yediyas Hatayra. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Limud Hatayra. Limut Torah also includes saying the words of Torah, even if you don't understand what it means. However, Yediyas Torah, the knowledge of Torah, Shir HaMitzvah, the amount of the mitzvah, Hudafka Bidiyas HaPerish, there you have to know what you're saying. And the more you know, the more you makayim the mitzvah in a beautiful way. Nevertheless, he mitzvah close. It's a general mitzvah, believe have though without difference, is halacha leimit which halacha you're studying. The neisa aleim the mitzvah yidias on the kiddushin mitzvah say. In addition to knowing Hashem, it being a mitzvah say the etzem ayidia the very knowledge itself he mitzvah say protis. It's a specific mitzvah. So when you learn Hasidus, look what the Rebbe says here, look how he concludes. When you learn Pnimi Zatayra, in Kuch Kabbalah Hasidus, yet you're doing three mitzvahs. One, Limo Zatayra, you're learning Torah. Two, Yediyah Zatayra, you're learning, you, you understand Torah, you have the knowledge. Viyadila, and number three, Viyadila Salikul Shebet Torah, Elo Kolona, and you're knowing the divinity of Torah, which is greater than both. It's not just you're learning about uh, a, an ox scoring an ox. And you're not just learning about a sukkah. And a, you're learning about God. That's a third aspect. And the Rebbe says here, Ha'oyla kulona, which is greater than everything else. That's also very radical, Moshe. <laughs> Ha'oyla kulona. And now the Rebbe says, "Vehu pach Hashem," and he ties it back to the theme of the Mimer. This is the jug of oil. Shechosim bechayis b'shel koyin gadol. They sealed with the seal of the koyin gadol. Shebezem and natzchem as b'chem as adav shabamis. That's how you win the war over the animal drive. So the Rebbe in this Mimer is telling us clearly: you need to learn chsidis to win the war. It's not enough to have limud atayra. It's not enough to have Yudhiya Satayra, but you need to study Pnimi Satayra because that is the jug of oil. And only that jug of oil will light the Menorah and win the war. The other one, is, is the other two, of it's Taira, it's, it's Mitzvah Seh, of course. But the element of victory over an opponent requires Pnimi Satayra. Next page. My Hanukkah, this is the meaning of my Hanukkah. The Hanukkah of Tevis, Chonu Chofhei, right? Hanukkah is an acronym, they rested on the 25th. Chofhei, who Svidas Hamalchus. The Rebbe doesn't go into it, but he says 25, Chofhei is the, is the 10th emanation called Malchus kingship, royalty. The Chonu Chofhei, they rested on the 25th. 
הוא שהמשוך מגיע לבחינס המלכוס. This means that they brought into the world godliness that impacted Malchus, kingship, royalty, the world. The Be'inyin HaSvidus HaSvidus HaMalchus is say for the Choldarge, when you talk about the emanations, the Svidus, is the last of all ten. Uvavoyda. What does that mean in service of God? Inyin HaSvidus HaMalchus Yamlucha V'amshol HaLatzwey. Oh boy, the Rebbe brings it back home. Talking to us now. Directly to us. Malucha means controlling yourself. The hardest thing. Self-control. You, you crowned him over all your organs. In Yiddish, one should, one should be and, and becomes control over himself, Yonason. So in other words, until you hit Malchus, you're still not in full control of yourself. With, with godliness being what controls you. That's why it's Chanu Chaf Hei. When were they able to rest? Only on the 25th. Because you don't have ultimate rest if you're not in control. Because if someone else controls you or something else controls you, you're not really at resting. You're not really, you're still get, waging the war. And that's why we say Chanukah. They rested on Ko, on Chofei. They accomplished the control over every part of their being on the 25th, i.e. Malchus. Kingship, the that's when they became a Moshe al See, you don't have this in most of the Maimorim that I've seen on Hanukkah. You don't have this particular lesson. And that's what we're learning here, Moshe, is a very important lesson to share with the family and friends about Hanukkah. Why did they rest on the 25th? So everyone will tell you, because they, waged the, they fought the war. They, they won the war on the 24th. So they, they still were fighting, right? And, the, and, the season, and, and they won. So the next day was the 25th. Comes along the Rebbe and says, that's true. But what does it mean spiritually to a person? It means that until you come accomplish that you are a ruler over yourself with God and He's guiding you, you're still at war. It's a, a fantastic thought. I mean, and again, it's, it's a very hard thought to be in control. A person should lead their life to be in control and only Hashem's will is what's done. That's, that's the hardest thing. But that's what Hanukkah is about. So go on an ounce today and put up a sign. Hanukkah is about self-control. They'll think you're out of your mind. Well, that's what the Rebbe says here. It's about self-control. Another good theme to Fabreng about. The Zeo, my Hanukkah. So now you look at the Gemara. What is Hanukkah? how he takes this piece of Gemara. You know what he says when the Gemara is asking, my Hanukkah? The Gemara is asking, how can I can have self-control? My Hanukkah! What is Hanukkah? How do I accomplish self-control? It comes through working on yourself. The Zehu, and he now he now he fits it into the Gemara. Quote, Bechofei Bekislev, on the 25th of Kislev, Yei Mechaneke, are the days of Chaneke, Tman Inun eight days. Vehine Chotche Akayis, Heib Or Yosher. Kabbalah says, Yonason, that the month, the, the summer months are what we call the straight light, Or Yosher. The Chotche Akayif, the tough Winter months that we're going to have tomorrow, supposedly a northeast, a eastern here, it's a snowstorm, if it ever comes, hopefully it won't come. Chachiyak Chayrif, the months of the winter, Heim Or Chayzer, and you know very well from Chicago how cold it gets there in the Windy City. Or Chayzer, Moshe, you know what that wind is? It's what we call the rebound light, Right? You know, in basketball, when you got a rebound and a guy gets and he stuffs, you know what I'm saying? It's intense. The rebound, it's intense. Or Heuser. So the winter months are the intense months. 
The summer months, the sun shines. It's the godliness. Although in Hasidah sometimes it says it's just the opposite, but for now let's leave it at this. During the summer months, which is the third of the summer months? Sivan, which is the Matan Torah month. Which is the third month in the winter? Kislev. What does it mean in service? The summer months, Nisan, Iyer, Sivan of Torah months, light, straightforwardness. Torah, just learn. It's drawing down godliness from above to below. Over Sviros, Sviros at Teferis. If you talk about it in, in the Sviros, the emanations, it's the third Sphira called Teferis, beauty. Because it's all riding smoothly. Comes along the Chachi Achayr of the winter months, or Chayzer, it's the rebound. It's the, it's the argument, the coming out of an argument. This is an Avoid, not Torah, but davening, service. It's coming from below to above. The Besvides, but there are Chayzer, whose Svides are Netzach. It's not the sphere of Tefera's beauty, it's victory. You know what victory means? You go through a war and you win. Endurance. Oh, when you got Netzach, you're a, you're a real king. Why? Because you had an opponent and you had an issue and you overcame. And that's self-control. Self-control means you don't want to be controlled. And yet you refine yourself and you come to a point where you do control yourself. That's Netzach. Melochein. In the Bechoydish Kislev, Shushvidas HaNetzach. Kislev, which represents Netzach, victory, but Avoida B'Nebisiras Nefesh. That's when the Yidin had self-sacrifice. Mesiras Nefesh, Hanukkah. In the... Bechofei boy, so on the 25th, Nitzchub Esa Yevonim, that's why specifically on the 25th, they overcame, overpowered the Greek, Assyrian Greeks, Hamenabdim Altaydas Hashem, who opposed the divinity, not just Torah, right? Remember we learned earlier in the Mimer, they opposed the divinity of Torah, U Mitzvah of Yisbarach, and God's Mitzvahs. So the Rebbe, and you know, you're probably wondering, how did he answer all the questions? For that, I'll have to, you know, <laughs> do another uh, thinking, which I'm not right now there. So I can't answer that question, how he answers every single question, but most of the questions are answered. Because he asked about why the 25th, he gave us an answer, because the 25th is about self-control, which is the ultimate victory over the Greeks, which want to abolish self-control. Self control. In other words, do it your way. Why must you keep Shabbos on Saturday? Keep it on Sunday. Why must you circumcise a child at eight days, right? All of that. Circumcise them at, at, at 25, 30, you know? So, so the Rebbe is explaining to us the importance of the 25th, and that's why it's called Hanukkah. I, I wish someone would take this mimer, this is such, and, and rewrite it in 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 English. Maybe Yonison someday you have time. This is a mimer that lends itself to a beautiful essay. I'm serious, and an essay that's inspirational for the average person. Chosid, not chosid, lahav the goy or yid. You see, that's something we still haven't done. We have to take chasidus and and write chasidus as essays. That should be comparable to the world's best essays. And then give source material references where it comes from. I, I don't know, have you found anyone that's done that? Rab Jacobson had an essay on it every year. Jacobson, Yossi Jacobson, or Simon, whatever, one of the brothers has what? An essay? Simon, he has an, an essay content every year. Oh, oh okay, fine, fine, fine. And I entered I it. Good, beautiful. What I'm talking about is taking a mimer. Taking this, you're right, you're right. I know someone, I know someone, Taka, who wrote for that contest, he took a mimer and he wrote it up, or part of a mimer, and it's excellent, and I actually used it and shared it with other people. 
That's what I'm talking about. This mimer. My Hanukkah. Moshe was asking me yesterday, you know, about my Hanukkah. Here, here is a Gemara that any yeshiva bacher, any, uh, any from person knows the Gemara. My Hanukkah. What's Hanukkah? And take this and give him what the Friedrich Kedavid says, how to look at this. My Hanukkah, it's an eye-opener. And, and, and it'll be welcomed. And of course you say, you know, this is the, it's not the literal meaning, but it's, 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 it's something that's you know, has its sources in Kabbalah and Hasidus and in Teira, and, and more importantly, it's very practical. Myshe Self mentioned, control, self control is a very, very important issue these days. <laughs> you know? <laughs> said it's not just an important issue these days, it's been an important issue in the past and will be in the future. It, no, go, it, it, go, it goes of, against the very the very uh, existence of man in a way as we right. as man is now who, who doesn't want to be i mean in control controlled i mean what's rosh hashanah let's let's go back rosh hashanah is two days submitting to hashem you, you know but th- th- this is hanukkah is taking it like a step further into into your practical life mishal atzmai mishal atzmai and you know um Unless you could explain and prove why this is better for mankind, people generally don't like this idea. We like to do what we want to do and not be controlled. Right? And the argument is you have free will. Doesn't free will support not being controlled? You don't tell me how to do it. I have free choice. The answer is, of course, you have free choice. Part of free choice is knowing that you are a creation of Hashem. And Hashem gives you the free choice and will never take that away. At the same time, It goes back to the Torah. The Torah says, Hashem says, and you shall choose Chayim. So, Moshe, it's a contradiction. You tell me I have free will, and then you tell me, choose Chayim, choose life. And what's the answer? It's not a contradiction. This is the advice of God Almighty to us. It says, hey guys, be smart. Choose Chaim and you'll, you'll have it good. You don't want to? Don't. Yeah, otherwise you've got to get yourself a good lawyer. Yeah, or you got to be your own lawyer and it ain't fun. But uh, anyway, uh, Moshe mentioned today is the day when the Alter Rebbe was... Redeemed, released from jail the second time the Alter Rebbe was imprisoned. It wasn't with the same hardships as the first time. And uh, frankly, I don't know, and I'm not even sure if there is lots of information about the second imprisonment in Moshe. So I, I don't have much to say about it. And I don't have the Svarim to look into, uh, you know. Um, but it is brought in Hagyayim Yoyim, and Moshe mentioned it to me yesterday, that it's this, it's, uh, that's one of the reasons maybe why the Tzemach Tzedek made the uh, Latke oven, the, uh, the Hanukkah party, you could say, with his family on the fifth night. One of the reasons. It could be that he, in other words, why didn't he do it more, you know, in the fourth night or the sixth night or the first night? It could be that was like the celebration to celebrate his grandfather's release from jail the second time. Moshe, what do you want to say? I see you're looking at something. Yeah, I just, I pulled the, my, I keep in my studio a yom yom, and you, you said it was a yom yom, I, I'm just curious where it is, that's all. I thought I saw it, I don't have a yom yom in front of my, it, 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 uh, it's in one of these days, am I wrong? Well, it's, it was, oh, wait a second, I'm sorry. Look on the, look on to, look on today's day. I, I was looking the wrong day, so looking the wrong day. Um... Yeah, so uh, uh, so for the Kislev of uh, Chav Zion, third day, it says, during the Alter Rebbe's second arrest, um, in 5561, 1800, he was not incarcerated as harshly right. as the first time. Right, that's what uh, I mean. The charges were more, the charges were more ominous. Right. For they were, that the doctrines of Hasidus and the opposition was intense. He was held in the Tani, Soviet prison, 
and released on the third light of Hanukkah. It's interesting. It says Yerel Lev was released on the third light of Hanukkah. Right, right. That, that's why I said, I said possibly, <clears throat> maybe the Tzamech said. It, <clears throat> right. It's just interesting, Rav Zevin. Rabbi what? A friend of mine, yeah. Rav Zevin, you know, Zen Sin, Sipur Yechassidim. Yeah. So if you look at there in his volume on Moadim, yeah. uh, he brings it, but he brings it on the Ner he says the Ner HaChamishi, the fifth night. It's interesting. Right, that, so, so that, that's why, the, that's the question. It says he was released on the third night, so why are we celebrating the fifth night? But, but you're saying Rabbi Zevin says he was released on the fifth night? You know, I, I, I'll have to look at it again. I'll, I'll, and, I'll look at it. And if he does, Moshe, if he does, it's, it's not a contradiction, I'll tell you why. Because he came from the strain of Hasidus known as the Kapust, which we discuss sometimes, you know. Yeah. And it could be they had a different tradition than the Lubavitch tradition. Could be. See, the, the, this, this, you, you got to go back 100, 150 years. We, we don't know. But, yeah. but the, I do know, if you look into base Rebbe, which is, you know, uh, it chronicles the, uh, the, the first three Rebbes, Alter Rebbe, Mittel Rebbe, and Tzemach Tzedek, there are some discrepancies, and the Rebbe already pointed them out, and, and, and there's discussion. And he was also of the cup, more of the couple's uh, Ladi line of, of Chabad. Who? The rabbi, rabbi, uh, his name was uh, Helman. Helman, the the author of Beis Rebbe, was not a chassid of the Marash. He was a chassid of the Marash's brothers, of the Kapus dynasty. The first the Ladir and then the Kapuster. Right. Although later he came back to the free the Rebbe when they already passed on and he was still alive. So anyway, Chevre. Have a great day. Listen, uh, I'm not. I'm not giving shir the next two days. We're going to learn Sunday Mitzvah back to Kuntur Shemayin. Okay, it's Rosh Chodesh. Okay. Okay. It's Rosh Chodesh. So uh, one day Rosh Chodesh. Have a great Rosh Chodesh. And uh, you know, if you need to communicate with me, I'm always available. You know. Thank you. He says. By the way, we're done. I just want to mention there is a side note in the Hayom Yom where it talks about the Rebbe's second arrest. Yeah. It says here. See, it points to it says see. On learning Hasidus from Klaus, page 24. It says, I mean, the same for on learning Hasidus. Yeah, that's, is, that's from the Frida Karebbe. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I, you know, I, I have it somewhere in the house, but I don't have it. There. Maybe it's online, Moshe, you can find it. Yeah, I think I have it at home. Actually. So then, then take a look and let me know what you find. I'm interested. You know, it's something that you brought to my attention that I never really checked out well, and um, it's interesting. Okay, my Josiah is on. Good seeing you. Hanafrel Hanukkah. Take care. Bye bye. Take care.